Hi everyone, it's KJ here and I'm back with another video. I know it's been a while and it's been a while since I've done a Q&A video like this. So I wanted to make sure I answered as many questions as possible. So I'm gonna get right into those questions. Make sure to follow me on Instagram if you wanna be part of these videos in the future. Huge shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and let's get right into it. The first question is from Jocelyn Duran and she asks, best studying tips? And honestly, it's just make sure you know what you know versus what you don't know. There's no use in completely studying over and over again on the topics that you're really comfortable about. Make sure that you touch on the realistic test topics that you're maybe more unsure about or you have a little bit more trouble on. And then that just makes sure you round out your knowledge on that certain subject and best prepares you for any exam. This next question is, what do you believe your possible mission in life could be? Honestly, I think I just need to be able to touch as many lives as possible. And this YouTube channel is already a great step in that direction, but I hope to touch even more lives in my entrepreneurial endeavors in the future. So we'll see how that goes, but I just wanna have a positive impact on as many people as possible. Emily SJ88 asks, how is your health now? Hope you're doing better. And hopefully you can tell by now that my face is starting to get closer to what its normal size was. There's still gonna be months of recovery where a lot of my stretch marks on my arm and my stomach hopefully subside a little bit and hopefully the rest of the water weight just goes away. But only time will tell. And the good thing is I'm on good track. All my vitals look good, it's just time at this point. Grayson asks, how did your experience at MIT shape who you are today? I think the biggest thing that I've taken away from MIT is that I can do anything. I was constantly in rooms where there were just a lot of really smart people, but throughout the years, I realized that I'm just one of those really smart people. I learned how to problem solve, and in general, I think I just have a better perspective of who I am as a person and the things that I'm capable of. The next question is, can you suggest ways to get yourself to work rather than indulge yourself in distractions? The reason why people procrastinate in nature is because it's either too many tasks that they think it'll take too long, so there's no use even starting, or there's too little tasks where you think you can just do it in five minutes so that you don't have to do it right now. Either way, I think sectioning off your tasks into bite-sized chunks will allow you to actually have the motivation to do them. So if it's too many tasks, separate them into smaller ones. And if it's too little tasks, either do it right now or group it together with other tasks that you plan to do. This next question is, what was the hardest part about going to MIT? And honestly, it's what I touched on earlier. It's the fact that so many people are so smart and the fact that everybody is really good at at least something. Sometimes you just feel like you're the dumb one in the room. And honestly, having a change in mindset because that's just not true will help you a lot in any university or work setting. Know that you're good at what you're good at and other people are good at what they're good at. And don't try to compare yourself to others. Just try to be the best version of yourself. The next question is, hey KJ, I would like to know how were you balancing school, your girlfriend and the gym? And I think it's just being able to section off time for each of those things. If you plan in advance, then you won't waste time just kind of sitting around or not really doing anything. I know that I have time for work and I know that when I'm off work that I have time for other people and those other people also include myself and bettering my health. So working out is really important to me and spending time with loved ones is very important too. This next question is, hey KJ, what's the philosophy you followed one day at a time or planning years ahead? Honestly, I was in the latter point of view before where I would think that I need to have like a five-year plan, a 10-year plan. But especially because of COVID and especially because I've gotten sick this last year, I'm really just living every day like it's my last. I'm making sure that I'm continuing to do the things that I love, the things that I care about. Of course, it's going to be in moderation and I'm not sacrificing my future or anything, but I am making sure that I'm enjoying the here and now and not sacrificing now, just for the benefit of maybe a better future, I don't know. This next question is things to do in college that will help me get a job right after graduation. Well, I mean, in life there's no guarantees, but the thing that I think 
helps people the most is having relevant experience in that specific field. And if you don't have a previous job for that experience, get that experience yourself, whether it's through unpaid internships or through projects, any type of experience in that specific field will only help your case in any interview or job application setting. This next question is, hi KJ, which MIT courses are most helpful in your work? That's a tricky one because all of them kind of rounded me out to become the person that I am. I will say that I really enjoyed public policy classes in my economics courses and general business classes that I took at MIT Sloan, in addition to, of course, the coding classes and physics classes that really helped in my day-to-day -day now. But I think, in general, I really love the fact that I diversified the types of classes that I was taking and it really rounded me out as an individual. Joshua asks, how do you continue to stay motivated through setbacks and challenges? And I don't know, I feel like there aren't any failures in life, whether it's like health failures or general failures in entrepreneurship or classes or something. I think they're all just learning opportunities. And in this past year, when I got really sick, I just learned to really focus on the things that I really care about. And that meant I couldn't do as many things as I wanted to, but it did mean that I was enjoying myself more in the moment and spending more time with the people that I really care about. Johan asks, favorite meal to cook? Honestly, I've really loved using my air fryer, so any meal out of there, whether it's a nice air fried chicken and some rice and broccoli, or Michelle and I also really like to make homemade pizzas, which always turn out really nice. Cordell asks, do you own crypto? I don't at the moment because everything is consolidating right now, but I do believe that it's the future and I'm really bullish on the industry in general. So I will be investing in them in the very near future. I'm just waiting for good entry points as my other investments settle. The next question is, what is something you wish you knew about adulting? And I think the biggest challenge so far is that you're not going to be able to see the people that you usually see very often out of that college setting. And so everything really revolves around planning ahead of time and different people have different schedules and flights are expensive sometimes. So you really have to be deliberate with seeing the people that you used to see very often. And yeah, I think that's something that I wish I planned a little bit better in advance for that and just investing early because investing early will always help you out in the long run. The next question is, there are so many times I feel so overwhelmed in my academic time. Do you have any advice? Yeah, I think I've gotten very overwhelmed over the past couple of years, but one thing that really keeps me grounded is going to that other thing that takes my mind off of the work or academics that I'm doing, whether that's playing basketball, whether that's lifting, or whether that's just playing some video games or watching a movie, just taking that time to relax a little bit will give you that extra bit of productivity later on. And that gets me to the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creatives on topics ranging from design and web development to entrepreneurship and finance. With Skillshare, you can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. I recommend productivity classes in order to help you stay focused and also any class that gets you acclimated with the nuances of investing. I personally am really interested in the class Demystifying Cryptocurrency, Understanding Bitcoin and Beyond by Malcolm Demores, the Chief Strategy Officer at CoinShare. Everything is tailored for efficient learning, so there's no ads and new premium classes are launching all the time. This makes it really easy to stay focused and actually work on new skills. The first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a limited time one month free trial of Skillshare so you can explore your creativity today. The next question is, do you think you'll be where you're at if you didn't get into MIT? Yes, um, that's the simple answer because I know the type of intrinsic motivation that I have and I know that I would work really hard in any given situation to get where I need to be. But I do acknowledge that MIT gave me a head start because of how much it challenged me in my course loads and because of the self-confidence that I feel after coming from an institution like that, knowing the work that I put in. The next question is networking tips. Yeah, for networking, it's really just about meeting and connecting with as many people as possible. Use your network to broaden your network even more and don't be afraid to talk to people that seem to be people that wouldn't talk to you in the first place because at the end of the day, people are just people and 
they will talk to you if they have enough time and if you seem like the type of person that they do want to talk to. So in whatever setting you have, whether it's work or school, make sure to just talk to people and learn about them as human beings and that will probably, most likely, broaden your network. The next question is, I didn't have a solid background in chemistry throughout high school. Will I have problems in an aerospace major? No, the last chemistry class I took was in my sophomore year of high school. And then when I went to MIT and we had to take thermodynamics and other chemistry courses, I was fine. They definitely make sure to talk about some of the basics again. And if you ever felt behind, you can always just look at YouTube videos, refresh yourself and learn the different things that you need to for those specific classes. And there's definitely a certain progression in college where they'll make sure that you know the certain topics before you get to that next class. Next question is how you feel about the Lakers right now and can we win the chip this season? Yes, it's a brand new team with a bunch of new players and they're not even doing that bad. Right now, I think at the moment I'm making this video, they're about a half game out from the fourth place in the Western Conference. They're fine. The next question is, what's the best experience you gained during your medical emergency? I think the best experience was the fact that all of my loved ones cared so much about me and were always checking up on me and I never felt like I was alone in the whole process. And yeah, I mean, that really meant a lot to me. The next question is a really good one. Do you have any regrets until now? How to deal with such thoughts? I wish I could have done things differently. And that goes back to my other point earlier where I don't consider anything a true failure because there are always learning experiences. So I don't really have situations that I regret because I use those situations to take some life experience out of it or take a life lesson out of it. And then I can transform that regret that other people may view it as and transform it into something that pushes me forward and has me learning from those mistakes so that I can do it again more efficiently in the future. This question is, in this world only educated people become successful, is it true? If not, what matters then? I don't think it's true. There's a bunch of successful people out there that didn't even finish school or didn't even go to college in general. There's athletes that are successful, there's tech entrepreneurs that are successful, and there's general business people that are successful that didn't go to school. I think what really matters is the intrinsic motivation that you have within. If no one needs to be there to tell you to work hard, I think those are the people that are going to be successful. And it doesn't matter whether they went to school or not, they will find a way to do what they have to do to be successful. So that's all the questions that I'm gonna to answer today. I didn't want this video to be too, too long. Again, make sure to follow me on Instagram because that's where I poll um, my followers for the questions that are featured in these types of videos. Also make sure to subscribe to this channel for more quality content moving forward. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.